Now, awesome. And then I'm gonna cut off my audio and OBS. There we go. All right. Uh, and we can start whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm good. Let's All right. do it. Sorry, I'm not wearing a Spider-Man suit. Spider no, it's suit. okay. Uh, I'm only uh, I'm only doing it out of you know out of uh, I don't know obligation. I just felt like I had to. But anyway. <laughs> It's a sick fucking suit right there. I love the design oh, of that. Thank you. It's, um... Well, yeah, like, I think everybody on the planet knows I've made it. I was about to say it, and I was like, <laughs> that's what I fucking do. Oh, my God. Anyway, hello. Welcome to the, um... Spider Bite cast, where it's been so long that I... Shit you not, I forgot what the name was. Just now. We're here with... Johnny, I don't know, should I call you Johnny, like, your, by your Instagram ad or your YouTube channel? I'll let you introduce yourself. So yeah, hi, I'm Johnny Michaels. I am a cosplayer and aspiring filmmaker. And I, on my YouTube channel, I post a lot of Spider-Man cosplay content where now I've focused more on tutorial-based videos showing everyone out there how to make their own Spider-Man costumes. And on the side, I'm just also uh, trying to be a filmmaker. Have you, I, I don't want to like skip down the list here, but I saw when you said that you were a filmmaker, I was, I was off put cause I've never seen you do any film projects. I'm going to skip down the line a little bit. Have you, yeah, go ahead. have you done, have you made any film projects or are you currently making any film projects that you can talk about? So, okay. Yeah, I, I actually answer both those questions. Um, so if you scroll through my YouTube channel, and if you're an old fan, you know that I actually have a few film projects. I actually have a playlist of short films on my YouTube channel. They're kind of hidden because I haven't done one in a long while. But one of my first like sketch short film I posted on my YouTube channel was A Very Webhead Christmas. It was basically, I created this Spider-Man character that was Spidey Claws. Uh, it was a Spider-Man Santa Claus mix, uh, and my friend accidentally killed her, or killed him, and yeah, like, I don't know if I should, like, unhide that video. I hit it, because it's awful, but yeah, that's technically my first Spider-Man fan film. That's and, pretty yeah, funny. Just other school yeah. Like, I did. I don't think... <laughs> no, sorry, go on. No, no, no. You, what was your question? I didn't. I I know like the 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 common plot for stories like this is like oh no, we've accidentally cold like murdered Santa Claus in cold blood and now we have to do Christmas. I Actually, thought no, like being Spider Man would just be enough. <laughs> well, we literally the plot of the the thing is she's trying to convince me that right he isn't real. Uh huh. And then at the end, she's like dragging the dead corpse of like Spidey Claws. <laughs> oh God! What? Why is this so gory? <laughs> it's not gory at all. It's just super weird. Like I'll ha like I'll unhide the video so people can watch it. But like, yeah, it, it was weird. A weird time for me. You gotta unhide but, a video like that. Like after you yeah. just like coming out and saying like that's that's fucking wild. Yeah. Now it's out in the open. I have to unhide it. You have but, to. Yeah. Yeah, recently though, uh, last year, last summer, I filmed a independent horror movie uh, I was cast in. We got flown out to Minnesota to shoot there for a couple weeks. Uh, my character was uh, Damien Vasco. He's uh, um, this executive producer for the show that the characters are filming in the movie. And that was great. I actually have a tattoo on my neck. For the project, I don't know if oh you can see wait, it. oh shit! Is it like behind yeah, the like, ear? Yeah, like I don't <laughs> zoom in on that. Like, oh, that's creepy. Yeah, so it's the killer's mask, and I got the tattoo with the writer and assistant director. She was just like, "I'm getting a tattoo for my birthday of the mask," and I was like, "Okay, I'll join you." So that's my first ever tattoo that's on my neck. Awesome. Yeah, so that was fun, and like. It was like it was both the best and worst experience of my life just because of the situation we were put in because it was a really low budget film it was like i think our budget was twenty thousand dollars right and um i got heat stroke on set because i was put in a leather jacket rough during the summer 
yeah. for my character's costume. And then uh, I also <laughs> cut my hand on a prop knife. Holy shit. Yeah, and like other people like got thrown up and got hurt on set too. Um for different reasons. But yeah, the the film's called Sadage. I should probably say that out loud. Um I talked about it on my videos a couple times, but I haven't really said anything about it. But yeah, it was it was great. It was a great experience working on that film. And uh I'm actually currently in the process of writing two films as of right now one's a horror comedy and i can't really confirm this but um you'll get an exclusive right here it's a spider-man fan film that i'm currently writing that's pretty that's pretty exciting i feel like half the budget on that horror film you mentioned <laughs> went to hospital bills or whatever amenities you had to do to patch yourselves up <laughs> All we had was band-aids. That's the rest of our budget. Like, it was creepy, though, because, like, we filmed in this cabin, like, right. in the middle of nowhere in Minnesota. And, like, all... Because this was a female-led crew. Shout out to all the female filmmakers out there. So, like, all the girls would stay in the cabin, and all the guy, like, guy actors and, like, a couple of crew who were guys uh, stayed at a motel, like, half an hour away. Oh, I see. Yeah, we were all stuck in one room, so there's like four guys in one small motel room. The bathroom door hit the toilet, so oh. that's and it smelled like chlorine. Mm. That shit, like mm. someone, yeah. That shit sounds like it but sucks. Yeah, yeah, no, but it was it was great. I I would I would do it all over again just to relive it. It was it was great and terrible. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna. I've been. I've been. I've been tearing around the list here, and I'm finally going to stick to yeah. it. I'm going to, you know what, and I'm not going to go through these boring bitch-ass questions. I'm going to go, I'm going to, you know what, I don't want to go down the line. I don't want to be traditional. I want to throw myself right in. I haven't done this in, like, three months. Like, not even. I think the last one was, like, five months ago or something like that. I just know it was with. It was with ATX Spidey, right? Oh, my God, yes. It was with Liam. He is such a talented motherfucker. He is. Uh, I've had quite a bit of conversations with him, just like us talking about sewing and stuff. He's a great guy. Uh, oh yeah, he like his stuff is amazing. And speaking, speaking of people you've interacted with, what are some mm. of the what are some of like the they don't have to be big names, but is there anybody notable that you think personally that you've interacted with, like around the basis of like doing Spider Man stuff? Like who's some, who are some of the most biggest or most interesting people you've interacted with? Okay, so I got some stories. I got some oh, stories for shit. you. Oh, shit. All right, so one of them was around the time Infinity War came out, and I posted a video about how I did the gold bands on my Iron Spider suit. Right. Well, Kevin's Creations actually texted me an image, this was years ago, of him doing that technique on, like, a test thing. He was like, this is really cool and good. I was like, holy shit he just texted me what the fuck like on <laughs> instagram video, apparently huh like on instagram or, yeah, or he texted me on instagram oh i was about to was, say like, he just randomly grabbed your number and was like this is amazing and you're like who is this <laughs> yeah, no but i texted me on instagram and that was an amazing feeling Dude, I need to, like, turn on notification posts for when Kevin does anything because, like, I just, I love looking at his costumes. Like, I, some yeah. days when I get bored, I'll straight up just scroll through his suits and, like, I, it's so entertaining <laughs> to me. I love, like, he does that. It's so wild to me that you can do so many different things, like, as a human being. So, because Kevin works out, he screen prints these fabrics, and then he sews the suits together. He makes mechanical moving lens, and it's, like... What the fuck? That's like know, so much like, shit. You can only have one thing. You can only have one. <laughs> no, but I can't talk. I do like so much different shit. It's just wild to me how well his different talents like mesh together. Yeah. And it's amazing. I, I remember following him around the time that he first started doing his mechanical lenses. Like it was roughly put together and stuff. I saw his journey. I remember when he did a Joker cosplay. He did like a Jared Leto Joker cosplay. I've yeah, never heard of that. People. I've I yeah. yeah no that's a shocker. That's when he was going by Lenses HK, I believe. That's when he was before Kevin's Creations. But yeah, 
So that was like my first big like interaction with like a Spider-Man cosplayer. And then this the next one was a little more recent. This is a little embarrassing because this is just stupid of me. So I don't know if you remember, I tried putting up a what if Spider-Man pattern online. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember that. So um, that was really stupid of me just because I didn't get permission from uh, Scratch Threads who made the pattern base. It was just me being stupid because like I was like, oh, other people alter pattern like bases all the time. You know, somebody took off the Rami pattern. Everybody uses that. So in my head, I was like, okay, so if I just make alterations to Scratch Threads pattern base, and I did, and I made everything from scratch, like the like the webs and the um, the details, like the dots and the squares, I did all that from scratch, and I altered the boot pattern uh, to be like more of like a Raimi boot pattern. And I was like, okay, yeah, like this is what people do. I'll just post it uh, so I can sell it. I wasn't originally going to sell it, but... I thought, why the hell not? I need some money. Yeah. It was just an act of, like, desperation. So I posted it online, and one person bought it that night. And then I get a text from the amazing Spider Lab. He was like, hey, dude, like, I don't know if you should post that. Like, have it sell it, make a profit of it, because it is Scratch Threads pattern. Right. And then uh, this was all during the night, and the time difference, like, I didn't see it till the morning and then he also sent another text after that he was like yeah i just talked to scratch threads you should take it down right now because he said don't share this pattern base like because like even in says like on his website like don't share like anything from the pattern and whatnot so i was like oh shit yeah okay so i took it down gave the guy who bought it a refund because i didn't want to make a profit of it I texted him, like, I took it down, I gave the guy a refund, he was like, okay, we're all good. Like, he wasn't mad at me or anything, I think he was just kind of, like, watching out for me, because, like, I did fuck up, like, there's no yeah. question about it. But, yeah, that's how I first kind of interacted with the Amazing Spider Lab. <laughs> that's fucking insane. I mean, yeah, it's not really the best first impression you can make, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah, with my anxiety, though, afterwards, I was like, he hates me, he hates me. Oh, oh my God. yeah. No, I hate but, like, that fucking feeling. Me. Yeah, he texted me a little bit afterwards about my the drawing of the bricks onto the mask of my right. Amazing Spider-Man 2. Like how I drew on the bricks and stuff. Oh, shit. He was like, I used to do that. I was like, so like, okay, yeah, we're good. He doesn't hate me. He probably doesn't really think about me, but yeah, he doesn't hate me. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, fucking, honestly, I tried to reach out to Gavin, Gavin J. Uh, Konop, the guy who made, who's making mm -hmm. Spider-Man Lotus. Cause he he put out a he put out a um thing that was like, hey, I'm open to do interviews about Spider Man Lotus, and if you guys want to reach out and like ask me if you want to fucking be in your in your podcast, I'll do it. And I was I sent him a fucking I sent him an Instagram DM and I was like, hey, I do this shit. And I sent him like videos with <laughs> with ATX. I sent him that. I get fucking dead ass response. Dead nothing. And then I fucking. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being so, I am, I am, but I'm not like genuinely shaming him for doing other things. And if he sees this, I'm not shaming you. I, I'm, I'm mostly exaggerating my anger for the sake of comedy, but I go on his Instagram story or whatever. And he's announcing that like, oh, I went on this guy's podcast and I was like, oh, I'm going to go see it. And that guy has like 57 subscribers. And I'm like, are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? Try, like him. try that. See if that no, works. No, I don't want to. I don't want to like pressure him into coming on. You know what I mean? So like another interesting interaction. 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 I had was with G. Jake uh, Gavin Kanop. Oh, actually, right. Um, I posted. I don't know if you saw the post before I took it down, but basically, because I am trying to be an actor and whatnot, um, so I have backstage, which is this thing where people post uh jobs for actors to try to audition for and like casting right. calls and whatnot and i saw that spider-man lotus posted on there so i was like holy shit is this real so i check it had gavin's email and everything and then i saw the two roles i'm not going to say what the two roles are because that is kind of spoilery but uh i'll text to it later uh <laughs> but so uh, i saw one of the roles that i it was looked really fun to do. It was just a minor role, nothing big. It was just a like, couple-day shoot, 
and uh, whatnot. So you're in it. So, you're in it. You got the role. No. Oh. Because so, there's specific. Because the way it works is they specifically post like the city they're looking for. So they either go nationwide for everyone in the United States or just right. in the state. And they're shooting in California. Right. And I was like, fuck. I'm not in California. I don't have a car or anything to go there. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And I just posted on my Instagram, like, you know, I saw it, blah, blah, blah. And I hope whoever gets the role has a fun time shooting and whatnot. But then I was like, let me just submit an audition. Let me just submit right. my name into the casting call just so he can, like, see my stuff. Like, get so your foot I took the door. The post, and then I submitted it. Uh -huh. And I hear nothing back. Damn. They're actually the the time to submit closed yesterday so i would have had to heard back yesterday and they right. would have flown me out like yesterday or today in order to shoot so i'm obviously not in california i'm in my room in arizona so and i even like asked i even told them like because they're paying the actors for like a flat rate to come and shoot there and i was like you can literally use the money to pay for my travel and lodge. Like I, I don't even care like to not get paid. Would that be I'll like, would that be enough to cover that? Probably not. Like I looked up the ticket prices for round way trip and, you know, lodging for like three days. I believe they, the shoot was. So I was like, it probably was enough, but I still shot my shot just to see what would happen. But I didn't even get a response. So right. yeah. <laughs> Fucking Alexa makes making noises and shit. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna because I'm gonna talk to you about something that's affected me mentally. All right, this has caused me a great deal of mental pain. How is the the selling out of red clear dot spandex affecting you? That shit is not in oh. stock anymore. Yeah, I was actually gonna talk about that on one of my videos. Uh sooner or later but yeah that fucking sucks i have i bought the last two yards i swear to god i was the person that bought the last two yards i haven't used it i fucking johnny in fucking took those last two yards from me right now it's an unopened package of you me. motherfucker you're keeping that shit mint you fucking asshole you yeah. fucking i swear to god i like i was fucking looking through my discord servers and i I like saw some chatter about like oh, the red clear dice beanie sold out, and I was like, "No, it's yeah, not." Like, and then I, two other colors I went too, huh? They had like two other colors of like the clear dot spandex. They had white and black on right. spandex world, but then they just got rid of them like over the years, and like I guess over time, as people like saw my videos or whatever, or saw other people using clear dot spandex, they're like, "Okay, let me just buy it up." Yeah, and. They, I'm guessing they don't make unlimited amounts of it. It's like, I remember somebody talking about like supply and demand. There isn't enough demand for it. So yeah, they just ran out. Right. Well, I feel like for a spandex store, I feel like there is. I mean, like, there's no way they yeah. can get like enough business or like to fucking justify like people like us coming in maybe like twice a week and buying like at least two yards. I feel like. There's no way their store gets that much business to where our amount of buying this shit is, like, not enough. Because I feel like we fucking, like, us as the Spider-Man community who make shit, buy enough clear dot spandex to just, I don't know. I, like, I don't know shit about any of this. Well, you gotta think about it, too, because the, the amount of Spider-Man cosplayers, you gotta think about the amount who buy costumes, the amount who make costumes. That I would say true. the amount of people who buy costumes is way more than the amount who make them. That is true. I didn't actually think about that. I like. I didn't take a second to think about how little people there are that like actually get on a sewing machine and like. Yeah. Yeah. Not a lot of people have that sort of patience we do. <laughs> yeah. This is like. This is like my going to be my last red clear dot spandex suit. Unfortunately, I fucking. I. If you want extra two yards, I'm not going to use them. So if you want them. I'll talk to you about that suit. after the video. <laughs> you fucking. <laughs> No, all right. How I noticed, huh? <laughs> Everyone hit me up for the food. That's been he's gonna fucking he's gonna hold a fucking what's it called? A goddamn. I forget the word. He's gonna hold like a, a auction <laughs> for the spandex, and we're gonna like end up running each other out of money. 
We're going to be shooting up into the thousands and shit just for like two yards of this fucking fabric, man. Uh, I know a place that still sells black clear dot spandex, but oh, yeah. that's basically it. I recently got some for a, a Miles Morales suit that I'm currently making for my... How many friend. suits do you make, like... I month, I've had quite a lot. I get asked a lot, but I've never like taken a second to to count. There's of course there's suits I don't wear anymore, you know. But this is that. That's fucking sick though. I love your designs, by the way. That's like one of like the best things. Like I go sometimes through your page and like and your TikToks is like the costumes you make. The designs of them are fucking fantastic. Yeah, I wanna I wanna sit down because like a lot. Uh, I'm, I don't want to like talk too much about me on this shit because like I'm interviewing. The Johnny know, Michaels. So that sometimes, like, especially, like, I know it's supposed to be about me, but like, I also want to get to know people. So I'm just oh like, yeah, oh, that's, that's your fair. favorite suit. I feel like you at least got <laughs> a little bit of me in some of these. Yeah, but like I, um, I've been, I, I've, I've done commissions recently. I've been doing commissions. I literally put an ad in the last podcast for <laughs> making suits, ad. and I was <laughs> like, hey. You fucking, you little five-year-olds that fucking watch me. Go to your mom, go get your credit card, run my shit up. And, like, I, I, I so I essentially prioritized making costumes because that's what I want to do when I get old. I want to fucking get in the costume business. And then I, like, fucking, I was pumping out, I was taking two commissions at a time. I was making suits for Spider Pleb. I was making suits for Spider Manderson. I was making suits for a bunch of little name cosplayers. I made a suit for... Who's a notable person? I made a suit for um, Nero does stuff. He's his suit. Oh, my suit yeah. that I made for him is actually going to be used in his film. And I fucking oh, that's awesome. It beat the shit out of me mentally because it's like all this beautiful <laughs> shit that I'm making is going to be gone, and I'm never going to get to see it again. And it makes you sad. It really does some shit to you. And like I had to take a break and I had to up my prices because it just wasn't worth it to me. So yeah, I did commissions. Yeah. I used to do commissions. Um, I did two, and I'm doing two right now. Um, my buddy uh, Insomniac Spidey, or whatever the fuck he's going by now, the Devil Cause, whatever. I'll uh, I'll text you his at right now. But yeah, I did a couple suit commissions for him. Those were the first two ever suit commissions I did. It was like a classic black and red like cos uh, Spider Man, and then it was a it was the Civil War unused suit I did. I think you can see those posts on my Instagram. But yeah, I did those commissions for him, and then after that, I was just like, I can't do this. Because, like, I don't know about you, but the worst part of it is just, like, painting it. It's, like, the worst oh, thing yeah. ever. Like, puff painting. I can't do it anymore. I used to be able to. Like, now I can't. Yeah, you used to puff yeah, paint like a madman. Yeah, like, my... Tasm one symbiote costume. I puff painted in like two weeks to get it ready for Halloween. Oh yeah, that sounds like a fucking nightmare. Like especially the Tasm yes. suit out of all suits. I'm yeah, literally getting I'm literally getting school. messages about a commission right now as we fucking speak. I I, <laughs> I work for again. I still work with Narrow does stuff, and I'm part of his little film crew, junk art, and I'm like the only. I we like to joke. I am because I'm. Other than, of course, like, Spider Boy, I am the only, like, costume designer that works on commission. Spider Boy also makes costumes, but I am the only one who makes costumes for the crew. That, like, if they need someone to make them a suit for a film, I'll, like, pitch in and do it. And, like, obviously they pay me. And I, like, it's cool. And I'm willing to do it more than I'm willing to do, like, regular commissions. Because, like, I'll have, like, my, I get to see my suit in a fucking movie and it's awesome. But I'm I'm gonna sh I'm not gonna mention anything I've done for the past thirty minutes, and then it's gonna it's all gonna come flying out because I'm gonna ask you the next question. I've seen <laughs> you've been you've been buying like Aaron Alexander's fabrics recently. How like how are they like in terms of like shipping and pricing and just how they feel in general? Like how like what's the quality? Like give me an in depth review on it. So I only bought his blue homecoming fabric. That's the only time I bought it. Um, just because, like, I can't really afford it all the time. But I, this was around 2020, uh, before COVID hit. So I, like, he was doing a sale, and I was like, I hit him up. I was like, hey, how much is your homecoming kit? I've been thinking about redoing it, my homecoming suit. And he was like, well, 
here's the price for the entire kit, but here's the price for just the blue, because I know you can just puff paint the red, because I've seen your work, and he was a big fan of mine. So I was like, oh, okay, yes, yeah, so I'll just buy the blue from him. So I bought the blue from him, and then I came up with the original concept suit that I did, uh, which a lot of people, for some reason, like. That's the... I don't That's like. the fucking <laughs> suit I know you for. That's the one I know you for. The one that doesn't fucking work anymore. Yeah, uh, I threw that away. Uh, Damn, what? So I, I kept the expensive fabric for it, but it was just falling apart on me because I rushed it out. So I just kind of tore it for parts, and then I might remake it with better stuff. That's so uh, fucking rough. Like, I yeah, like, I have the first suit I ever made up there. Like, that's right there. I, like, if I were you, yeah, even if it was falling apart and shit, I would have just put that <laughs> shit right there. I still have the first suit I ever sewed. Uh, my first Spider-Man cosplay I've ever sewn. It's in my closet, but... Yeah, and then the actual, like, fabric itself um, didn't get to me till... I want to say... Whenever I posted that video, I think it was, like, August or something, because... Um, he's based in Peru, I believe. So all that, because of COVID restrictions, everything was shut down. He couldn't get supplies. He couldn't get it shipped out. So that took months on months. And like, I had moved, I literally moved twice in that process. So I was, used to live in Korea. Then I moved to the States in Arizona. And then I texted him my address that I was moving to. And then I moved again, because I was living with my sister in her apartment. And we moved to a bigger one so me and her could stay in. Right. And so I literally changed addresses like tw like twice, and I finally got it, and it was, it was honestly really really good. Um, even though I barely touch the thing anymore, like it still holds up, um, and yeah, it's really good quality. Like I don't know how to really explain it because I, it's because it's just fabric, you know, you can't. Really yeah, of course. But it's something you gotta to touch and feel. Like, like just touching it is like so satisfying, right. and like. Wearing it just makes you like look nicer, sort of. Oh like, yeah, it's nice and textured. So it brings yeah, out the, muscles. the best I can describe it. Okay, let me look through my let me look through my little <laughs> list. Um, I want to like ask interesting shit. Okay, I personally, I I know I said I would wait thirty minutes. I don't give a shit. Okay, I'm breaking my rule. I yeah. personally can't. People ask me a lot. They're like, hey, you should make this suit from a movie or whatever. Like, a fucking Spider-Man movie. And I'm like, no. I don't want to do that because when you draw up a Spider-Man costume for a movie, like fucking, like for a Raimi movie or a Tazza movie or whatever, they drew that to make it exactly. You know what I mean? They drew mm -hmm. it to make this exact, almost bring this concept to life. So I felt like if I were to make it, it would almost be pointless. What motivates you to sort of recreate these movie costumes from scratch, like the one you have in the back? That's very gorgeous, by the way. Thank you. Um, it's slightly just obsession. Um, another thing is just like, I didn't really read Spider-Man comics growing up because I grew up in Korea for 13 years. We didn't have like an American comic book store there just for me to read. So the way I connected with Spider-Man was through the Raimi movies, and I just remember always wanting a Raimi costume, like the exact one, but now I don't really like the design because there are better designs out there. And then watching the Tasm 1 and Tasm 2 and Homecoming, Far From Home, I just like, because the way those movies make me feel as a person and as a filmmaker, I just want like a memento from those movies, and that's the way I do it with costumes. And like, I know not all of my costumes have been perfect and like they're not 100% accurate. I try not to use that term like 100% accurate because like m the way I'm doing suits is it, like it isn't 100% the way that the costume designers did it for the movies. So for me to say like my costumes are 100% accurate and it's exactly like the movie is stupid because I took shortcuts. Like I did the bands using puff paint and like I bought pre-made like dotted spandex so yeah yeah it's stupid to say it's 100 percent accurate but and also it's just easier to have a reference like because when you're designing your original like designs like by the way they're again they're incredible thank you but, like for me like i need reference photos i need to know okay yeah this is accurate 
this is like what it's supposed to look like. If sometimes when I try to do original designs, it doesn't. like come out of my head like I want it to, you know? Right. I have a hard time with that. Yeah. You've been like, you've, this has only happened like one other time and I'm only going to brush past it because it like fixes itself immediately. But like there, you will just like freeze for about like two seconds and then your audio will immediately catch up. That's funny. Yeah, that's what happens. That's happened to you a couple times here. Oh, really? Okay. Fine. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay, let me pick another one. So, do you, you, okay, let me mark my shit off. Let me fucking, <laughs> let me not get ahead of myself. I'm going to mark off that one. Okay. So, I've seen your Invincible costume, and mm -hmm. I thought it was great. I, when I, I do this thing where, like, if I watch a superhero show, I'll, like, I'll fucking hold that hero up on a pedestal for maybe about a month, and I'll forget about it. I'm currently doing that right now with the new Batman movie that's just come out. Your invincible costume. Have you? And I've had this thought a lot, and like I'm surprised that I haven't seen a single person do it yet. I know you based it off a certain person who did like a fan art mock up of like an MCU mm -hmm. invincible suit. Did you ever think to use metallic swimming goggles for the eyes? So yeah, the the whole ordeal with the fucking goggles. My God, people texting me for months on end about those goggles. Ah, okay, so. I've thought about it. I'd never... So I looked up a bunch of different possibilities for those goggles. Like, I looked up the swimming goggles. I looked up, like, fucking clear spoons to use as the goggles and whatnot. Like, I... Me and KJ Spidey. Shout out to KJ Spidey for always, like, giving me advice and stuff. We looked up a bunch of different possibilities for the goggles. And, like, none of them worked for me. Or I couldn't just spend money on money on these different possibilities you know like right. it's people kept on texting me like oh why didn't you do this why didn't you do that and i'm just like because i don't have just the money to like spend on different possibilities and have them fail over and over again right so like i so instead of just spending money i just try to come up with a um like a creative solution and like it, it it worked for the time, but I think sooner or later I'm gonna have to redo it unless I get cast as Invincible for the live action movie. <laughs> till then, you know, like that would be pretty fucking cool. Yeah, like <laughs> funny story about that. So like, there's a comment somewhere on my YouTube channel about Invincible, and he one guy te like commented, "You know what, Johnny would make a great Invincible if he lost weight," and I was like. Fair enough. Uh, I posted it on my Instagram too. That's like, fucking yes, mean as enough. shit. Um, I was like, it's true, but I'm working on it, okay? Or Bruh. Like, man, dude, fucking... People who comment on the internet are fucking ruthless, man. Yeah, I actually got one comment. Oh, I still have this, like, saltiness about this one comment. It's on my selling zippers video for, my, for this suit. This one guy, he wanted to act all smart. And he was like, you know, you could just buy a four-yard zipper so you don't have to sew in three zippers. And I was like, why the fuck would I need four-yard zippers? Why the fuck would I need a four-yard zipper? That is... I don't know if you meant meters or yards. Yards is 12 feet of an invisible Let, zipper. Yeah, Who like needs what? that? Like, like is this ridiculous. like a YouTube comment? Because he could have gone back and edited it, like... There's there's a kind of an, an anonymity with YouTube that I fucking hate because you're always yeah. questioning why these people did the things that they did. Like for example, when someone comes along and like likes your video, that's like oh cool, somebody liked it. And then somebody like comes along and dislikes it. They could dislike it for any fucking reason that you'll never know about. And it's like yeah, you'll go on any me. you'll go on any YouTube video and it's like I gave five million dollars to this one homeless guy. And I'm being completely genuine, and I'm not at all doing it for clout, I swear. And then there's just four people who dislike it. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, what is the I problem? Like, every time I, like, go through, like, my videos, just looking at, like, the analytics and stuff, and I see a dislike, I'm like, why would this person dislike it? Like, what is, like, what is their purpose in life where they had to, like, go watch my video and just say... I didn't like it, so I'm going to hit this fucking button instead of just not hitting the like button. 
You know, I feel like not hitting the like button speaks enough and not like saying, you know, hey, let me just hit this fucking dislike button. I don't like it. It just sucks because, like, you know there's a reason out there, but you'll never fucking know what it is. And it sucks. Yeah. It fucking sucks. But what you what you got to realize about, like, people who shit on you or the, on the internet, especially for, like, no fucking reason. Like, I get people all the time who come in my comments and they just fucking take some fucking pro i don't know what the fucking medicine is but they drink that fucking pink shit that comes in the bottle and then they just shit all over me and it's like they have no reason they have no reason to do the things that they do especially when you dissect it cosplayers online like what's the fucking hate about exactly it's like when you when there's a difference between someone who has like i don't usually use the term hater because i think the term hater is like heavily misused for people who have good criticism people with good criticism are not haters People with unfaithful criticism that will shit on you just to shit on you are just, those are haters. Those are people who have, like, just some hidden trauma that you'll never know about. They have such shitty lives that you'll never know about. So they go in your comments and they're like, your costume looks like dog shit. And then they'll leave. And it's like, you just got to learn not to give a shit because you know what? You're probably having more fun than they are. Even when you're upset yeah, about honestly, their comment. Like, I've just stopped taking it, like, because, like, I like to humiliate them more than just to ignore it. So, I, like, if I get, like, a stupid comment or something, I will literally, like, post it on my Instagram. Be like, hey, look at this fucking idiot. Yeah. Just because, like, they're being a fucking idiot. And they posted it, like, publicly, so they're expecting people to see it. So, like, why not post repost it and, like, talk about how stupid they are? Yeah, like, I... I, I'm, I'm always down for shit like that. And then there's people that like, oh, that's harmful. And I'm like, dog. It's I've never got that. Like, Everyone it's they're being like harmful replies, first. It's like, yeah, they fucking deserve that. They're yeah. Person. <laughs> yeah, I do think, like, there is a serious problem with witch hunting. But, like, sometimes, sometimes okay. it's just. Please make sure to, like, blur out their name and profile. Yeah, picture, like, just of course. So don't go after them. Yeah, no, of course not. But then, like. Even I suffer from it sometimes, where, like, I'll be on TikTok, and I'll see, like, <laughs> someone posted a stupid fucking comment, and it's, like, like, literally today, literally just today, I saw a cosplayer that was cosplaying um, one of the Greek gods, I think it was the god of beauty, I don't remember, and someone posted a comment that was, like, such and such isn't black, and I couldn't help myself, I, like, ran back to the original oh, video where they commented it's fucking irked me so bad. yeah and their comment is like oh the comment doesn't exist i fucking ran into that comment section i grabbed their at typed it out word for word and i was like come back here and get this fucking l right now right now and it's like man i hate people like that because like yeah. it irks me a little more because i am a person of color i'm half korean yeah. so like i've gotten i haven't actually gotten that because like i'm half white too and like i I guess I'm just not black or like Muslim or brown. Yeah. Like, cause that, they seem to go after them more than like Asian people for some oh, reason, yeah, like cosplaying. I'm just like, yo, they're just dressing up as their fucking favorite character. Their favorite character doesn't have to be a black person. Like, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, what's his nuts? Uh, Subway Spidey. He did a photo shoot of him in like the classic Peter Parker, like, uh, outfit with the sweater vest and like the, button-up shirt he looked fucking amazing in that and like, like that was awesome i thought like he had like the 60s get up I oh it was yeah. awesome i'm like for people to like try to tell him say hey you're black you can't dress up as peter parker that's the fucking dumbest shit i've ever heard like he connects with peter parker more than miles morales so what i don't think i've ever seen him do a miles cosplay yeah man just like let the let the guy live you know what i mean like if the if the shit is drippy even if it's not fucking drippy, even if it doesn't look cool, why do you care that much? Like, yeah. if the shit looks the awesome, only, then fuck off. The only, like, the only critique cosplayer, like, not critique I've had against a cosplayer was this, he, he had no, fo- he basically had no followers, and he was dressing up as Spider-Man, holding a gun, just, like, posting Instagram photos. Like, I was like, what the fuck? This is weird. And it was getting a little weird every post. Like him just holding guns and like different guns as Spider-Man. I was like, I know there's that Japanese Spider-Man meme where he's like shooting, but like that's yeah. a little... That's he's, a little just, he's just a superior Spider-Man weird. fan. It's fine. 
yeah <laughs> yeah that's the only like critique i had because like i'm kind of like i'm not against guns but i am so it was yeah. just odd for me to see that and like you know there are kids like following people and whatnot and you know it's just weird you know to see spider-man holding a gun and like yeah it's just weird that's the only critique i've had against someone do you okay? So I know I know a lot of the time I talk about like costumes specifically with people who like mainly do costumes and shit. But I want to mm-hmm. talk about like Spider-Man media and what you know. I recently have had oh, like no, you froze. oh shit. Wait, are we good? Okay, you're good now. okay you're good awesome. Now. I've had like sort of a, a media burnout of Spider-Man because like I I don't hide it anymore. But I'm like. I'm autistic. Like, Spider-Man is my special interest. I live and breathe Spider-Man. I'm like a little fish in the bowl that you just have to drop, like, scraps of a Spider-Man comic in every night. You know what I mean? I don't give a shit, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and recently, you know, I've been... Spider-Man's been, like, my special interest on and off throughout my entire life. Like, I switched over to, like, Rayman when I was, like, maybe, like, 10 through 12. And then I'm back on the Spider-Man beat again. And I'm sort of having, like, a burnout again. What media do you suggest for people who maybe feel like they've seen all that there is to see about the character? Like, if you had to show them, like, maybe one to five things to pull them back in, what would those things be? So, I actually have an answer for this. This is crazy. Um, watch the Japanese Spider-Man show. <laughs> like, I actually like this is a serious that. thing, because, like, it's, it's so different from the Spider-Man character we know but it still kind of has that morally good kind of thing. And, like, it's, it's meme as fuck, so you'll get a great laugh out of it, because it was made in the 60s and whatnot. But, yeah, so, like, check that out if anyone's feeling burnt out about it. And then through that, you can explore more Japanese content with live action, specifically, called Tokusatsu. Um, through there, they have... Power Japanese Power Rangers, which is known as Super Sentai. You'll get a bunch of... They've had... I think they're on 46 seasons of, like, different Power Rangers spanning back from the 70s. So you can go down a rabbit hole in that and explore that. And then another tokusatsu series, which is close to my heart and I love, is Kamen Rider, even though I don't really express it. It's uh, kind of like Power Rangers, but not really. It's more just... Like, you'll have to watch it to understand it, but it's also great. So you'll go down through those rabbit holes for a while. I think Common Rider's on their 50th season right now. So yeah, you'll have 50 years worth of content from Tokusatsu and whatnot. But uh, but for other Spider-Man related content, uh, fan films. Fan films are probably one of the greatest things to have ever existed because you know they're made by fans for fans. You know they're not out here to make a profit. They're solely just trying to either have fun making a movie about their favorite character or to get their favorite story out there, a story that they created for others to enjoy. Like, you know, we talked about Spider-Man Lotus a little bit, and, like, I remember seeing the first trailer for that, and I was like, holy shit, this is, like, just the music alone playing throughout the scenes got me emotional. I was like, this is going to be something special. And, like, just the way the Spider-Man fan community came together to, like, raise how much money for their movie? Like, was I it, like, $100,000? Something like that. If you, if you look at their Indiegogo page, I think it was, like, 100000 But, yeah, they got them way more than they intended to for their budget, and, like, they're truly making something special. And, like, I could just tell from the trailers and, like, the casting call they had for the movie and, like, all the images they posted about the different suits. And, like, it's fucking nuts. And, like, that's what I kind of want to do uh, next year, uh, with my Spider-Man fan film, if I can get it together, is, like, create something special and different, because, yeah. Um, yeah. I think that those are the mainly things I can think about for, like, Burnout, is just, just different Spider-Man content made by different people. Oh, yeah. Like, I want, I want to say this, like, one, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, I probably have, but I'm just gonna, in case I have mentioned it before, I'm gonna mention it, like, once, and then immediately move on. The fucking casting for Harry Osborn was fucking spectacular. He looks exactly like how they used to fucking draw. Like, I saw him, and I was like, 
holy shit, that has to be the most like accurate appearance casting I think I've ever seen. Literally. I was like, what the fuck? He looks exactly like how I envisioned like Harry. It was like, like fucking nuts. He looks fucking right off the page. They, they're doing so good with that film right now. I can't wait for it. This I love the suit. The suit is like the suit so is good. I know they don't like to compare it to like the movie suits and whatnot, but you kind of have to. It's just the perfect, simplest translation to from comic to live action. Like, yeah, like they I didn't did. overdo it. They just did enough to modernize it and bring it to live action, and it was just perfect. That's fucking like, Spider Man, dude. It That's is fucking... like when you see it, it just jumps out, Spider Man. Like I, I, I think, and like the movies would be there. The movies really would be up there with Lotus. Like, cause Lotus, like, if you compare the the fart, like the and the fresh start suit or whatever the fuck they're mm-hmm. calling it at the end of No Way Home, to the the Lotus suit, there's only like one, there's only like a few things that put the Lotus suit above it, and it's just the fact that they fucking weren't afraid to put the big stupid back logo on it. Yeah. Come on, like, I fucking, I was like, I was like, watching it in the film, like in the film or in the cinema or whatever the fuck, and I was like. This is awesome. This is cartoon fucking Spider-Man. This is literally like right off the books. I'm so happy. I, I fuck, I'm literally up in Massachusetts. I'm visiting my girlfriend and I'm like scrolling through Instagram and I'm like, it doesn't have the back logo on it. And I was like, my friends were like, oh yeah, it has the back logo that's in the front. And I was like, what the fuck? I was like almost a little upset because we were this close. And I was like, I'm not upset. It's still a great cost. I love to nitpick. It's a wonderful costume. It's just like, I don't know why they're so... Some design choices are just like... There's, yeah, some design choices are just like, I don't really like about that costume. Like, how it has the this like the lines from this suit. Oh, yeah. And I like, always thought that was weird. I don't like that. It just looks too fucking weird. And like, ew, the logos, I hate. I'm like, that... Uh, I'm, I mean, I, I like it. Logos. I like it. I'm not... I'm. I'm only complaining a little bit, but if there's one thing I do have to like, because Peter makes this costume by himself from scratch, right? He's locked out of the Stark tech, assumably, because it doesn't recognize him anymore. Because he's essentially been wiped from, like, the history. Well, I didn't put a spoiler warning, but, like, just go watch it. You haven't watched dog. it yet by now? What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> I mean, I did know, I did see one guy in my comments that was like, oh, I don't have a car, and the farthest cinema away from me is, like, this long. And I was like, damn, I kind of felt bad, but, like, yeah, anyway. Walk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> how did how did he get the blue lines on there? Like I genuinely want to fucking know this. Like cuz with like the Tasm movies for the blue sections, Peter all Peter has to fucking do is go over to fucking Parallel Life Studios and fucking yeah. order like a fucking two logs of fabric that cost him like a, a 10% of it his college that, tuition. Right? Like he doesn't I mean, have yeah, to do I all did, that much. Why couldn't he? <laughs> like all this lines and shit and I'm like how did he do that? Like, I'm sitting here, I'm genuinely sitting here thinking how he did this. Did he, like, take apart he the Far From that. Home suit? Did, did he, like, <laughs> dye it blue somehow? He still has He still has that costume, which is... The whole ending is, like, a little, like, okay, how did this happen? But I still love the ending of it. It's just, like, a little convoluted how he did the costume. It's always a little yeah. convoluted. Yeah, like, I wish we got more... Toby's Spider-Man do, like, the fucking urethane webbing. Yeah, I always it. wish we, like... Yeah. I love Andrew's. I love Andrew's series of movies, and one of my favorite things about him is that we get to see him make the suit. And it's like, yeah. how? Because no, because how does he get the golden emblem off the front if the Stark Tech doesn't recognize him anymore? That thing is grafted yeah, onto there. How the fuck did he get it off? I guess that's why he just threw it away. He couldn't take it off. It's like, such silliness. Dude. It's like dog. Can I like? I saw the sewing machine, and I'm like, yeah, that's enough for me. But I'm still going to be up at night thinking about how the fuck he did that. And that's fucking bullshit. Like, my only complaint is that I wish they strayed away from the Far From Home pattern. And that's it. That's my only yeah. complaint. And the back logo, obviously. But I, otherwise, fucking spectacular. It is... Like, if they just kept it like a shiny blue spandex, like a, a lot of people thought it was. And oh, like, yeah. Just like the dot texture. That would have been fine. That's completely doable. That's like... Okay, yeah, he could do that. That's almost accurate, too, to, like, the comics, because the way they shade the black. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, I don't know how he did that. He just did yeah. it. <laughs> and then, the, no, because I want to, uh, because when this fucking movie finished, I was like, one of, my, one of my favorite things that people do 
is they'll fucking, they will fucking rush to fucking, like, even if they don't have a clear image of this costume, they will take shit from trailers and they will fucking make shit up and they will just throw it together on a set. Like, even fucking RPC Studios did this shit. All they had to do was wait, like, a month after they finished, like, their version of the fresh start suit and they could have gotten fucking better reference photos they would have just they didn't even need to like see a full 360 all they would have needed to know is that it just uses the far from home lines and they literally would have had an accurate costume there's people who have already made far from home suits like cabin creations there are people who have made patterns and put them out there and it's like all of this is null and void now (laughs) because you motherfuckers couldn't wait two minutes but then again, I do kind of want to like shit on the movie because I love shitting on the movie. Yeah, it's just bit. that it's like that thing where like they want to be the first to do it. They want to get everything. Yeah, all yeah, they, they had to do to do it and like get it out as soon as possible. It's yeah, not, like anything. all they had to do was just show us the rest of the costume instead of like hiding it in like the night. Like all we had yeah. to do was fucking see a three sixty of the suit before Peter jumps out the window. I know that's not. I know that's a little too much to ask, but like maybe show us better. I don't know if they had it in CG or if they had like a fully realized costume. But I just wish no, we fucked. What? All those. It was fully CG. Even all, him jumping out the, all the fucking costumes in that movie were CG. All I expected him was jumping out the window to be not CG, but that was CG. That, I'm pretty sure that was CG. What the no fuck? Way they made a practical costume for that. I don't. I don't like a lot of the suits in that movie. I love. I love the the suit that you are showing in the back. That that was great in the movie. But I like. What little fucking kid is going to go to the store and buy, like, the black and gold? So even I, as a little kid, if I saw that in the store and I was like, wow, that's dog shit, and then I would go home. So, hot take. I actually like the black and gold suit, the practical suit that they used on set. They released some photos of it. I like the practicality of that suit, that they actually made it. I hate that they covered it inside, like, shitty CGI and whatnot. Like, the design's okay, it's not really anything special, but, like, just the way they... Because, like, in every Spider-Man movie, like, for Tom's, they have a reason for why he has a new suit. So, like, in Homecoming, he has the new Stark suit because Tony Stark gave it to him. But then he takes it away, he learns that being Spider-Man's not about the suit, and he becomes Spider-Man in the homemade suit. That's completely fine. In Far From Home, he has uh, all the... All the Iron Spider suits, blah, 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 Stark suit. And then he gets the stealth suit because he can't be recognized as Spider-Man there. Fine. He makes the upgraded suit at the end. Completely fine. He's becoming his own Spider-Man. But in No Way Home, his Spider-Man suits are literally just like... It's that one... It's just this suit, but like different in yeah, ways. It's like there's inside like, out or has something added on top. It fucking annoys me. Like compared to like the cup of water of reasonings, they just give you a little drop. Like Peter just fucking got paint thrown on him in the middle of the street. Like what the fuck? Also... Like, why couldn't Aunt May wash it before? Yeah, like also why... How the fuck is he wearing this thing when it has like tons of wires and shit on the inside? Like... Like, personally, when I have, when I'm fucking putting on a costume and it has, like, a loose thread or something, and I'll put on, it gets caught. It, my fingers get caught and shit, and it's like, why is he, how, 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 and it's like, and how is he washing it, too, and not getting electrocuted? Like, I don't understand, it's like, I get it's waterproof, too, because, like, you know, he got dunked in the Stark Lake, or, or he got yeah, dunked in the lake, taken out by Stark, it's waterproof, obviously, <laughs> but, like, how the fuck does he fucking wear this shit when there's so much wires in it? And how how can you not see that through the suit with like outlines and shit? I don't know, man. Like, yeah, it's yeah. I'm glad they got rid of it, but yeah, yeah, it's just weird. Like they, I, and like the integrated suit, I'm just not a fan of. I don't like I'm it. I'm only a fan of like the torso part, literally just up to the belt line to the neck. I am a fan of the arms, the legs. I think are dog shit. Yeah, like I, I don't like it. I think I honestly, think I saw I how just... you mentioned like the gold parts, how it doesn't match up like to the, compared to the rest of the suit. Right, like, you mentioned that. Like it's just a weird design detail, and I was like, yeah, that does look fucking weird. But I hate that that was like the f- last suit in the movie. I wish he just stayed in this suit. Yeah, and like, I. I... Because there's a little bit of hang time between, like, the end of Far From Home and the 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 fight with Mysterio. I feel like you could have easily just been like, 
Oh, Peter made like a few new suits before this movie, and then he fucking goes in his room and he's like, "Oh, I need this suit." Just whatever, whatever. given a literal any other explanation, like we literally the machine that creates all the cures and stuff is there in the fucking room he's staying at. Could he not have made like an electroproof suit? Yeah, and I I've said this before, and I'll say it again. We really saw Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire come back in their iconic costumes while Tom is running around in the most fucking dog shit suit I've ever fucking seen. And it makes me a little sad. And it's entirely CG too, like yeah. which makes it suck even more. I'm like, I know we have the technology now, but like, doesn't mean we have to cover up fucking Tom Holland in CG. Like, yeah. it sucks. Like but and that's what the movies are now. Yeah, and I mean, we don't get me wrong. I I shit because I love to shit, but this movie's still pretty good. It's it's more than pretty good. It's it's awesome. Still doesn't beat Spider Verse though, and I will fucking I will I will doesn't. fight tooth and fucking nail for that movie. I have to defend that movie all the goddamn time. I am always in the that TikTok movie conference. is literally a cinematic masterpiece. Like it's come on, so fucking good. And people it's... will just dismiss it immediately because it's animated. Because it's animated. Oh my god, I hate that. Literally, I had a conversation with one of my teachers at, at, back in my high school. I'm friends. I was friends with her daughter, and like we were talking, and she, I asked them like, "Hey, did you see the new Spider-Man movie?" And they're like, "Oh no, it was animated, so we just dismissed it." And I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" It's like the best one. I know. Like, I wish I like. I went to that movie with my ex at the time, or like my girlfriend at the time, because like she doesn't like superhero movies. I, I was. I wish she came along with that so she could see that. But like, yeah, yeah we ended up breaking up, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's how it is, man. No, but I'm saying, fucking. Oh, you don't like it because it's animated? Well, you know what? You want, you want to know what else is animated? Fucking Spider-Man: No Way Home. That shit's animated. Basically. So is every other Tom Holland movie. Fuck you fucking little sweaty little nerd that's like oh it's anime don't like it cause yeah. shut up shut up and watch There's your cinema so much more with an like animation creativity that goes into it. it it's just amazing like yeah it's where every time you watch it you recognize something new about the animation details it's amazing it's fucking spectacular i love that movie. i'm so excited for the sequel and again I guys i'm gonna do my designated complaining about things that are really good why doesn't the fucking stripe that goes down the side of Miles' costume go all the way down to the boot. That is like... I, that makes I me upset. Like the new design, honestly. I, I like they kept the original design, but I understand you gotta change things up so they know it's different. Yeah. And I do wish we had more time with the with the suit Miles wears in into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. But I still like this new one. I just... I just wish the <laughs> fucking line... Did he run out? Like, come on! <laughs> <laughs> fuck the spray paint can ran out he's like shit oh well <laughs> oh well I'll just leave it there fuck man no but I I like the new suit I really do I like that I'm pretty sure the spider logo is upside down on the on the back but I'm gonna I'm gonna is. hand something to all my spider-man Miles Morales like curators who like make Miles shit a really cool thing I like to do on Miles Morales' costumes I have a good example here right the logo, the logo's upside down. It's upside down. Why is it upside down? Because one of the most iconic things Miles has ever done is fucking, like, jump upside down from that fucking mm -hmm. building. And it's a reference. It's a reference to the What's Up Danger scene. That's why on almost every single Miles suit I have ever designed, the logo's upside down. Because it's like... That's a good reference. I actually want to get that scene tattooed on my so arm. Cool. Like, that's... Like, it's just so good. And, like, Spider-Verse is always left out, too, because you see all these, like, edits where, like, they cross over all the films, and they're like, oh, the we're gonna edit all the Spider-Man movies together, and I'm like, you didn't fucking edit all the Spider-Man movies together because you fucking you forgot. Out the best one. Literally, it's like Spider-Verse erasure, man. It's crazy. It makes me upset, man. Like, I don't care if it's not live action. It is literally the best film to understand spider-man like and it does in the main like character isn't even peter parker it's literally miles and like the way they did that it was amazing and like even the peter parker you get in that movie is really fucking good like there's sort of this quiet i love depressed pete i love yes it's peter so parker. good he's suit like he's like 
borderline suicidal in that movie. He's willing to like kill himself, not because he wants to save the multiverse, but just because he wants it to be over. It's oh, it's like, wonderful. I have this weird attraction now to like depressing characters. So like Peter B. Parker, uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman, uh, Invincible in the comics. Like they all just have sort of miserable lives. Oh, and yeah. it's just like so fantastic to see. <laughs> uh, it's so good. I I remember your Peter B. Parker suit. You don't really yeah, post about that. that one. Do you like? Do you ever? Do you ever like wear it anymore? I've worn it a couple times just to see if it still fits. But after I filmed the movie last year, I kind of gained a little weight just because I don't know. I had a depressive episode, I guess. Yeah. So like, I gained weight and like. I was 150 before shooting the movie, and then I jumped to, like, 180 just because I kept on eating food and not working out. Right. So I'm on the course of losing it. I'm back to, like, 178. So I'm slowly losing the weight so I can yeah. hopefully fit in the costumes again. Oh, but yeah. I still love that suit. Uh, I don't know if you know the backstory about that. Did I ever say the backstory? I the costume? When I was doing research for, like, getting questions for you, I don't think I... I just saw, I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I jumped around. But is there any backstory that's interesting? Uh, Sorry, you froze. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, uh, yeah, no, but like, what is the, what is the backstory? So the backstory behind the, uh, Into the Spider-Verse Peter B. Parker costume was that um, my video communications teacher in high school, he uh, has a big family um with him uh he ha- he usually has somebody dress up as santa claus for his kids you know he has uh, still some young kids um you know and he has somebody every year dress up as santa claus bring them gifts like a week before christmas and that year he had asked me to dress up as spider-man because uh his youngest adopted son uh apparently like spider-man uh so he asked me to dress up as spider-man with a santa hat and a sack of gifts to give them and i did that for him i and i didn't want to just put on like an old suit for this occasion and I wanted to make Peter B. Parker costume so I made it real quick in like a week and yeah it was a fast turnaround time and then I and I just uh, went to his house and his his youngest adopted son he was wearing a symbiote spider-man hoodie little kid and then he was like so in awe of me like um like he was just shocked looking at me and then his his mom like his wife was like uh i forgot his name but like yeah you want to say something to him and he was like happy thanksgiving (laughs) and everyone was just laughing and like no merry christmas and then yeah so i sat there in his house for a little bit um just watching them open their presents and you know uh they sat on my lap just like just for photos and stuff and the funny thing is is i'm friends with his son who's my age and i saw him like one of his daughters opened the door and i saw uh his son my age uh at the door and he was like oh my god when he saw me and it was just like yep it's me (laughs) (laughs) that's so funny it was was one of the greatest nights of my life just to see because like i'm forever grateful for him because he's what got me into filmmaking so, like, I was happy to do it for him, and then his wife wrote me a little card saying thank you, and, like, I still have that card, and, Aww. yeah, it was one of the best feelings. All right. We're kind of wrapping up on our hour here. I don't know if I want to try... I'm going to try to do something new. I don't... Is there... No, we don't need this shit anymore. Do you <laughs> have... Do you have anyone you would like to see come I'm not saying that, like, Whatever, okay, whatever Johnny says, you guys shouldn't go fucking clamor to whoever Johnny says and be like, you need to go get on the thing right now. Like, don't, okay? Johnny, who would you personally like to see come on next? I'm trying to, like, think of somebody who could, like, possibly do it. Um, like, I would like to see Gavin come on here and talk about uh, Lotus with you. You know what? That Everybody rule, you know what that rule I just said? Him. That rule I just said? <laughs> <laughs> Forget that shit. Bother Gavin. Go bark up at... No, I'm kidding. But, like... Yeah. But I would like to see, um... Probably one of the people who got me into co- Spider-Man cosplay. Like, um... Uh, I don't know if you know him, but his name... His handle on Instagram is Equinox Cosplay. Uh, he's one of the f- very first people I, I ever, like, saw. 
do Spider-Man cosplay. He's the first person I followed on Instagram. And he was great, but he's kind of retired cosplaying now, so you might have a hard time getting a handle to him. Oh. But uh, another person would be Vigilante Cosplay. He's another person who got me into it. And he probably can do it. Okay, wait, one more thing. I forgot about this. I asked people to send in questions. I keep fucking forgetting, okay? I have... <laughs> I had I had a few people send me in questions, um, so I'm gonna run through these really quickly. We're gonna do like a little yeah. lightning round. What was your yeah. favorite project to work on? This comes from Cooked Bunny Cosplay. My favorite one, probably Invincible. I think I liked that one. It was very simple, just sewing it real quick, and yeah, that was my favorite one. And this is from Kate Vale Dance Cause. Uh, what do you need from a... This is very weirdly typed out. What do you need from a suit in A, cosplay, a.k.a. posing, versus B, film, a.k.a. movement, gussets, vents, degree of fabric stretch, color, vibrancy, texture, etc. What is the most important in a suit versus the least important? This is a very fucking loaded question. Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, think about that. Uh, most important is... I would say comfortability, but you're never comfortable in cosplay. I would just say the most uh, important part is that you can take off the mask anytime you can because it gets hot in there, especially if you're wearing a face shell, so that's the most important. And least important, I guess, is um, accuracy. I'm just going to say that right now. Like, I know a lot of people are stickler for accuracy, especially me, but honestly, like, you don't really need it to enjoy cosplaying as Spider-Man. And I think that's I think that's it. Honestly, I think that's it. Um, I don't remember if I had anybody else ask any questions, but I think that's it. That this was this was Johnny Michaels. I'm obviously gonna put his all all his shits as, as much as I can find in the description of this video. And one more thing before we wrap it up: What's your favorite on-screen Spider-Man? I tend to do this every time, and I guess it's gonna be. A, yeah. So, are we talking about live action, or can we just say anyone? Whatever like, you want, man. Because I, I break that rule all the time. Is it a TV show, too? Because, like... You know what? We get more interesting answers this way. Give me the televisions. So, I'm going to say Japanese Spider-Man or uh, Spectacular Spider-Man. Those are my favorite, honestly. Yeah, those are pretty good. Yeah, I don't know why I expected that. Like, like when you fucking... You know what? I'm going to open up this answer, then. I'm going to open up this answer forever. Whenever I ask it, I'm going to be like, what's your favorite Spider-Man of all time? But... Yeah, like, your favorite iteration, like, just, because someone might say, uh, the Indian Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Man, I forget about him. He had, like, a little existential crisis during, like, Spider-Geddon, and he was like, do I matter? Or whatever, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. He's gonna be in, uh, Across the Spider-Verse, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for that. But anyway, thank you all for, <laughs> for coming by and watching. I don't know when this is gonna be out. I might edit it today, but I'm gonna be busy. I think I'm gonna go be seeing the Batman again with a friend, and I'll figure it out, man. But thank you so much for coming on. No, no problem. Have me back if you want. If you need content, have me back. I don't care. Bro, it, I'll, I'll, I'll hold should. a little debate hour, and I'll be like, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna put these two guys in Spider-Man costumes and, like, force them to argue with each other for, like, an hour. Or, like, if I need somebody oh, to, good. like... I, it'd be cool if I had, because I've been having a lot of people ask me to do like suit D D I Y videos again, and I'm like, you know what? And if I do that, I'll, I'll probably call up Johnny for a little co-host and like <laughs> have him say shit that I don't fucking know how to do. Right, but anyway, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, hit me up anytime if you need help with videos. I really enjoy your videos, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, the next thing I'm probably gonna put out after this is um dissecting the Raimi black suit, and there's some things I forgot to fucking mention in that first video because I'm <laughs> terrible at writing scripts. But thank you all so much for watching. I might start doing cosplay showcase videos and rip off Johnny because those <laughs> shits are cool. I want to do that. But thank you all so much for watching. Thank you, Johnny, for coming in. Please go check out Johnny's shit. If you find the stuff I do cool because I make all my stuff, then you're going to want to follow Johnny. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you guys. I'll see you guys next time. I don't know who I'm doing next. And you guys can always like DM. Please do not bother your favorite creators to come on here. But if you like, if you fucking, you know, if, you, if there's someone you want to come on, DM me and be like, you know, 
I want this person on. It's just like, why yeah. does everyone keep telling me to go on this podcast? Yeah. <laughs> Gavin's like, hey, can you... I'm not DMing you to come on your podcast. I'm DMing you to tell all your fans to leave me the fuck alone. But like... Anyway, I'm, I'm dragging this on. Thank you, Johnny, for coming on and all. No problem. You guys better behave when you get off this video. <laughs> but I'll see y'all. I'll see you guys in the next time. Bye.